Chapter 1 The She Wolf. The land was white and silent and without life. This was the Arctic. But there was life on the land. A group of dogs pulled a sled, and on the sled was a long, narrow box. In front of the dogs, a man walked with his head down against the cold. Another man walked behind the sled. A third man was in the box, dead. He was a young English lord, and they were taking him across country for his funeral. The thin light of the day was going fast when they heard the first soft, faraway cry. The front man turned and looked at the man behind. Then came a second cry and a third. They're coming after us, Bill, the front man said. They want food, Henry, his friend answered. When it was dark, they made their camp under some trees, and both men and dogs stayed near the fire. How many dogs have we got, Henry? Bill asked. Six, Henry replied. Well, I took six fish out of the bag to feed them, Bill said. And Big Ear didn't get any fish. But there's only six dogs now, Henry said. Well, I saw seven, Bill said. The other one ran away. Henry finished eating, then said, Was it... A long, sad cry came from somewhere out in the darkness. A wolf? The cries of wolves came from every side. Suddenly, Bill saw a pair of eyes in the darkness. Henry saw them, too. Soon there was a circle of eyes around their camp. The two men slept side by side. The fire burned down, and the circle of eyes got nearer. In the morning, Henry was first to wake up. It was still dark. Bill got ready to move on while Henry made breakfast. How many dogs did you say we had? Bill asked suddenly. Six, Henry told him. Well, there are five now. Fatty ran away in the night. After breakfast, they started their journey again. Daylight came at nine o'clock, and in the middle of the day, the sky to the south turned red. But the color did not stay long. By three o'clock, the Arctic night was back, across the silent land again. The cries of the wolves got nearer with the darkness. The two men made camp and ate their meal. Bill went to give the dogs their food. Suddenly, there was the cry of an animal in pain. 
something moved across the snow into the darkness. Bill was standing with the dogs, half a fish in one hand and a big stick in the other. It got half the fish, he said, but I hit it. In the morning, when Henry woke up, Bill was with the dogs. Frog's gone, Bill said, and he was our strongest dog. That day was the same as the other days. The men moved across the cold, white world without speaking. The dogs pulled the sled with the dead man on it. That night, Bill tied the dogs to a tree. Then the two men sat by their fire. A sound made them turn round. A wolf moved slowly across the snow to the dogs. One ear tried to pull away from the tree to get to the wolf. It's a she-wolf, Bill, Henry said. I see how it works now. She gets a dog to follow her, then the other wolves jump on it and eat it. That's what happened to Frog and Fatty. A noise came from the fire, and the she-wolf ran back into the darkness. In the morning, Henry cooked breakfast, then woke Bill. Spanker's gone, he said. He broke his rope, and the wolves have him now. Light came at nine o'clock. At twelve o'clock, there was sun in the south. Then came the gray afternoon. Henry was behind the sled. He gave a whistle, and Bill turned and looked. The she-wolf was following about a hundred meters behind them. When they stopped, the she-wolf stopped. What a strange color, Bill said. I've never seen a red wolf before. He got his gun from the sled, but the wolf ran away. They made their camp early that night. The dogs were tired, but there were still three of them in the morning. In the middle of the day, the sled turned over. While the men were trying to turn it up the right way, one ear ran away across the snow. The she-wolf was waiting. A minute later, about ten more wolves came out of the trees. They ran after one ear, and Bill quickly got his gun from the sled and ran after them. Soon after, Henry heard the sound of the gun. Three times. He heard the angry growling of the wolves. A minute later, he heard one ear's cry of pain and a man's scream. And that was all. The land was silent again. Henry sat for a long time on the sled. At last, he got up and tied the two dogs to the sled. But he did not go far. As soon as it started to get dark, he stopped and made his camp for the night. He made a fire, and the two dogs slept near him. He could see the circle of wolves in the darkness, and he did not sleep. Next morning... He used some rope 
to pull the long box up into the trees. They got Bill, and perhaps they'll get me, he said to the dead lord. But they won't get you, young man. The she-wolf followed them all that day, and she was there again that night. It was too dangerous to sleep. So Henry made a big fire and sat beside it with the dogs. The she-wolf watched him, only a meter or two away. Henry took a stick from the fire and threw it at her, and she showed her fangs and moved away. In the morning, Henry tried to get to the sled, but the she-wolf jumped at him. It was now too dangerous to leave the fire. He sat there for two days and two nights, throwing sticks from the fire when the wolves tried to get to him. Once, he felt the she-wolf's teeth on his arm. At last, he was too tired to fight them off, and he went to sleep. He woke once and saw the she-wolf watching him. Then he woke again a little later. Something was different. Suddenly, he understood. The wolves weren't there. He heard the sound of men and sleds in the snow. Minutes later, they stopped at his camp in the trees. Red she-wolf, Henry told them. First she ate the dog food, then she ate the dogs. After that, she ate Bill. Where's Lord Alfred? one of the men asked. In a tree, Henry answered. Dead and in a box. And then his eyes closed, and he was asleep again. Far away came the cry of the hungry wolves looking for food. <laughs>